Guys, this is Mubeen. We are talking about the pathologies of the respiratory system. In that, we are talking about restrictive lung diseases. Within that series, we are talking about the hypersensitivity pneumonitis. The definition of the hypersensitivity pneumonitis is, it is an alveolitis, alveolitis due to inhaled extrinsic allergen of known type break it down alveolitis so inflammation of the alveoli not the bronchi extrinsic has to come from outside it is not an intrinsic allergen that means it is not an autoimmune disease allergen has to be known it is not an idiopathic disease so now what is the difference remember that asthma is also an allergic disease and hypersensitivity pneumonitis which is talked about is also an allergic disease. So, what is the difference between them? One asthma is obstructive, this is restrictive. Second, why is that? I mean, what happened? Asthma is the disease of the larger airways. It does not involve usually the respiratory zones. It is the disease of the bronchi. So, so allergies of bronchi and the larger airways is asthma. Allergies of the respiratory zones or smaller airways is the hypersensitivity pneumonitis. And because they are affecting tissues in different areas, their pathogenesis and their clinical uh, situations are different, presentations are different. Okay, so remember this asthma type 1 allergy and obstructive. Alveolitis, this one, hypersensitivity. Alveolitis, a mixture of type 3 and 4 allergies of the respiratory zone and restrictive disease because of the fibrosis in the respiratory areas. So, with that, let us start pathogenesis. So, as I just said, that this is a type 3 and 4 allergy mixture. So, or hypersensitivity type 3 and 4 type mixture. So, let us say this is the respiratory zone, this green area. What does that mean? This is the area where the respiratory exchange, gaseous exchange can occur. Let us see what happens. Let us say an allergen came in. This is an allergen of known type, hay, farmer's lungs, actinomycetes and other type of things. So, let us say something came in. What will happen here? Let us deal with type 4 first what will happen is we have to look at Arthur's reaction. Arthur's reaction. Remember type 4 is serum sickness and Arthur's reaction. Arthur's reaction is the localized inflammatory response to some allergen. So, let us look at that. So, what happens is when the allergen comes in, so let us say it is here, the local macrophages pick up that allergen and they break it down. These allergens are then presented on the macrophage as on MHC2. MHC2. Remember, macrophage is an APC antigen presenting cell. So it presents the allergen on the MHC2. When it presents it on MHC2, what happens is that the localized T cells become active. Now, before that, also remember this, let us say there are no T cells here yet or very tiny amount, very small amount that is not enough to create a reaction. Remember that these macrophages from here will also run and go to the lymph nodes. So, let us say there is a lymph node here or there is a lymph node somewhere here in the axillary region. So, the macrophages would go to the lymph nodes. There, the macrophages will present the allergen to the T cells and B cells but let us start with the T cell. So, here is a T cell. So, let us say this is a CD4 helper T cell presenting with the MSC2, presented with the MSC2. So, let us say this is a T cell receptor. Then macrophage would release IL12, which will, which will make the T cell activated and T cell would release IL2. IL2, that would cause the T cell to become proliferated. So, there are going to be many, many T cells now. These T cells are going to run back to the area where the allergy is happening. Right? So, now what will these T cells do? These T cells in turn 
can do a couple of things depending upon what lineage becomes active. So, let us say that we have IL 4 and 5 coming out of the T cell. If that is the case plus wait this also is that interferon gamma is released as well right. So, now IL 4 or 5 or interferon gamma and remember that these are separate kind of T cells right. So, either T helper 1 or T helper 2 type we have done this in detail. So, as the IL 4 and 5 is presented that causes the B cell to, to become active right and B cell become those big plasma cells. Plasma cells are pregnant with antibodies that is why they are plasma cells right. So, they start making lots and lots of proteins. So, their nucleus becomes eccentric and they are filled with the antibodies. These antibodies are going to be released. So, when the antibodies will come here now you know that there will be antibodies here that would help in the inflammatory reaction as well. So, that is one thing plus the antibodies are now going to become loaded on the other cells too. Second is the interferon gamma when the interferon gamma is released that activates the macrophages. Now, an active macrophage is a dangerous macrophage what does that dangerous do do? So, if this was the active macrophage it produces more nitric oxide, it produces more reactive oxygen species, it does more killing plus in addition to the killing it of course, releases chemo attractants and cytokines that cause local inflammation. That local inflammation those substances plus the neutrophils come in and the damage start happening that inflammation would cause damage that damage when that gets repaired will get scarring and fibrosis. So, that means what you have to remember is this the hypersensitivity pneumonitis is it has two phases write it down acute or chronic. In the acute phase you do not see fibrosis right away you see the inflammation present. So, 4 to 6 hours after the exposure to the antigen for example, a farmer went to the farm and was doing something to the hay came back all feverish and dyspnea and, and coughing and sneezing what happened he has hay fever or let us say there is someone who is allergic to cats and goes into an area where there is cat and dander and, and cats hair are present and within 3 4 hours starts you know sneezing and coughing and has difficulty in breathing. So, what is that happening that is the acute reaction that is acute hypersensitivity pneumonitis. The late reaction or chronic reaction is if the patient stays exposed to these antigens on for a longer term then what happens is the, the damage would start occurring and fibrosis would occur that is a repair and that fibrosis would slowly cause the scar to shrink and the lung would become restrictive right. So, here the macrophage has become active and it is starting to cause inflammation. So, what kind of cells as a result of type 4 hypersensitivity you would see here on the acute phase you will see neutrophils to come here that is these are the chemotractants you would see T cells to come here you will see macrophages to be here you will see some plasma cells to come here acute acute neutrophil T cells chronic granulomas that is why this type of hypersensitivity pneumonitis is also placed in the granulomatous pneumonitis and why with the granulomas look and these are non caseating type these are not tuberculous granulomas these tuberculous granulomas will be caseating type these are not why because what happens is with the chronic activation of macrophages we know this thing that the macrophages would start fusing with each other right and these macrophage the fused macrophage will make granulomas. So, type 4 hypersensitivity reaction when stays chronic in the hypersensitivity pneumonitis then the granulomas will appear and if you see the granulomas in a patient's biopsy that cannot be an acute reaction it has to be a chronic problem because this needs time to develop. So, that is a type 4. How about type 3? Let us look at that. 
So let's say the allergens are coming in. When the allergens are coming in, these allergens are going to be picked up by the, the local cells. And these cells are going to go and then what would happen is we'll have the antibodies generated as we talked about it. That can be this way. Those antibodies, when they are present, they are going to be combining with these allergens. So let's say here is the allergen and here is an antibody that got combined with it or bound to it. This antibody antigen complex is the immune complex. It is a free complex. Remember type 2, the complex is not free. Type 3, the complex is free. And this is an extrinsic, extrinsic antigen of known type. Extrinsic antigen of a known type is now bound to an antibody which was generated by the plasma cells. Would it be immediate? No, it would take a few days, two weeks to form, two weeks, three weeks and so on. IgG will be formed first and then, you know, IgM. So anyways, now let's say the IgG is present here. The, this has happened. This complex will now settle down in the lungs. So next time when the allergen comes in, the complex will form. Complex would cause what? It would cause complement activation. So these are the complement proteins. Complement activation will occur. What will happen with that? Complement activation. One special complement is interesting and that is the C5A. A for activation, 5 for 5 lobed uh, cells which is neutrophils. So we will have neutrophils come into this area. So when the neutrophils are now sitting here, they are going to do local release of their chemical substances that are present in them. Right? So these chemical substances, when these are present here, what would happen? Inflammation would start. The result of that is going to be scarring. So as a pathologist, you would see both th type 3 and 4 reactions to be occurring. As a clinician, you would see that the result of that is either acute. Acute is going to be fever, dyspnea, cough, and feeling of tiredness because of gaseous exchange problem. Chronic, you would see dyspnea, malaise, lethargy, restrictive lung diseases, the FEV1, the capacities and volumes would reduce chronic. FEV1 or over FVC ratio will increase. It is going to be normal or increased because all the volumes are in reduced, but because of the elasticity that has become increased, patient will be able to expel the air fast. Again, this is not a disease of the bronchi, it's not an asthma, so it's not obstruction, it is restriction and then because there is fibrosis in these areas, when you ask a patient to expel air, patient will be able to very quickly expel the air. Compliance is reduced, patient will have difficulty breathing in, but ease in breathing out. So these are the clinical things. These patients are also having, they would also have Monday morning blues and what is that? The patients when they are, they come back from their work over the weekends, their exposure to the antigen is removed and so they start feeling better. Then they go back to the work on Mondays and as they go back to the work, they know they are going to become sick. They know they are going to start having dyspnea and cough and all those problems. So they become sad and upset and unhappy that is called Monday morning blues. Now, what kind of workers, what kind of patients, what kind of extrinsic antigens are going to do this? Let's talk about them now. Okay, now for some examples of the industries where the workers may, may get acute or chronic hypersensitivity pneumonitis. So let's look at that. So in fungi and bacteria, fungi and bacteria, farmer's lung, very common, the farmers who go out work with the moldy hay, they come back and they have a problem. So that is the micropolyspora fanny that causes it, that is the antigen. Burgososis, which is the sugarcane, pressed sugarcane or the sugarcane industry workers. So moldy pressed sugarcane can cause the thermos, thermophilic actinomycetes to grow and that when is inhaled will cause the same problem as you saw here. Cheese washers lungs. 
so in that case the cheese has to be moldy when that is inhaled that would cause the antigen as well to be that inha inhaled cheese has the antigen which is the penicillin penicillium cassie then if you continue miller's lungs that is an insect product so dusty grains have the cytophilus granarium that grows on it and that can be inhaled we have the animal products in that pigeon breeders lungs is very common the people who breed pigeons they can have they can inhale the dried pigeon droppings and that has the pigeon serum proteins in them that would cause a local arthas reaction and the type 3 reaction as well causing the problems similarly chemical workers chemical industry workers can also have the problems which are similar so i can't put all the examples here but just realize this that in your clinical history a patient who comes to you with the chronic or acute cough with the restrictive clinical symptoms not obstructive symptoms in that case make sure that you also ask the patient what is the industry in, the, in which they work or they have worked in the past cool thank you